Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Dell EMC Networking Tech Talk with OMNM uh, Open Manage Network Manager. This is OMNM 6.5. In this session, we're just going to talk about um, basically getting started, um, understanding the GUI, navigation, and the control panel. So I guess to start here, um, first place you start is with the login screen. Go back here to uh, sign out. Generally you log in, you're going to see this screen. Uh, the default login for OMNM is just admin and admin. This is a uh, demo system, so I have a slightly different login. Okay, so um, this is the default landing page for, um, for OMNM. And let's just start by talking about just the general GUI here. So what you're seeing here on the, across the top banner is a set of help items here at the top. Um, if you need help for the product, we have a variety of options. We have online help, which is actually the product's online help documentation. We've got um, OMNM manuals that will take you right to a Dell site to look at OMN manuals at Dell. Uh, we've got um, OMM downloads, which will again will take you to a Dell site to um, um, to download. And on on here we've also got OMM Dell Tech Center. This links to the wiki. We have YouTube videos you can go and look at. Um, some of the videos may show the prior format, which is our Service Pack 3 and earlier format, which would be black. Um, so you see black in the background, then that's the older version. But a lot of the concepts and a lot of the navigation is very similar, and the concepts are the same. Um, again, this is 6.5. And then if you have purchased, uh, there's access to your digital locker, and then you can actually go to purchase on Menem here, and it'll actually take you to a page where you can uh, um, order right online, whatever SKU level you want. Um, our general page setup here is uh, what we call portlets. And so what you see is uh, these little boxes here, it's called a portlet. You see work for manage resources and then search by IP and Mac and quick navigation and getting started. Um, these can all be um, added to any page that you want. This is just the default layout. And so you can add your own pages. I have a sample page I created over here, but you can simply go to add page and it will create a new page for you and you can start adding portlets. But once you get on these pages, I'll go to my sample page here first. I've added some here already just for example, but you go to this add applications up here. And this is where all of our portlets um, are, are um, listed. And so you may want to look for something like traffic. And so you can search here. If you can't find it immediately by looking, just type in traffic. So all anything with the traffic word in it will show up here in the list. So you can immediately see if you want to pull in specific portlets for that. Um, if you want tools like network tools, just type in tools. Uh, there's some network tools that you can add to a page. Simply click add and it'll add that to the page. And then typically you need a refresh here. And so you can configure any of your pages you want this way or remove portlets. You can always add them in using the add applications. I just want to point out there are a lot of different things in here you can add. I'll expand a few here, but there's uh, things as you start to use the application. You may want to come here to see if there's something you may need. Um, on the performance side, there's a lot of different portlets that can be used to represent your data. Um, that may or may not be on a current page. So just be aware that there's a lot in there. Um, and then uh, you can add those applications. Uh, you can manage your page with page layouts if you want to change the rows and columns. Um, you can also show versions here if you want to see all the versions of components that are in your product. This, and that's manage show versions. You're going to see the product details on this first tab. shows all the versioning numbers that come with this package. You can see this is 650138. This is the GA version of 6.5. Uh, we have installed extensions. Um, you may or may, may or may not need to access this page. One important one that you may want to know is the driver information. And this is where you can go to see all of the relative drivers that are supported by the product. You can see we have a, a whole host of drivers here. And you know things from Freecom, ROI, Alcatel, and you can see the whole list here. Many Cisco devices and some Juniper, Cumulus. Here's where you see the Dell EMC, the FTOS devices. So you can scroll over and see that um, all the models are listed here, as well as the operating systems that are supported. And so this might be important if you have a new device, maybe Dell just shipped it, 
maybe your momentum doesn't support it yet, or you've got a device out in the field and you don't know if it's supported, you want to come to the screen and look and see if you find the model number, and more specifically what we call this uh, sysobject ID right here, this identifier. This is an SNMP value that you would look up for uh, that identifies the device. And so if your device has this sysobject ID in its SNMP stack, we can identify it if it's in our list here. You can still manage devices um, if you don't have um, um, full SNMP um, control, but um, you won't get all the command line access that a normal driver would give you. And so um, anyway, this might be a useful page for you to come and look at if you're interested in what drivers are involved. Um, and so across the top here, you can also go to our control panel. This is where we have some of our administrative functions. The main ones I want to point out are users and organizations. This is where you go to create users. Um, if beyond the admin user, you simply click add up here and add the user you want, and then um, um, click add user, give them a screen name and some information, save it, and then the next part would be to add the password for this user. And then if you don't, if you want uh, privileges beyond uh, the normal admin, uh, power user that gets assigned, we can go to roles, and we can see that there are some roles here. And actually, a better spot might be to go to, let me just go to pick one here. There we go. And so, when, you know, once you get your user created, you would click on the password link to set your password, and you would click on your roles to, uh, to set the role, and so you can give them administrator or power user level. Um, default is power user. But then once you set those, you just save this, and that user then has that access to get into the system. Um, there are some other areas in here. I'm not going to get into too much, but a lot of the uh, control aspects of uh, the, web, the, web, the web server that comes with this are in here, as well as some other things. Permission manager, if you want to create your own roles, uh, you would come into the permission manager and modify those. There's various other things in here related to your system for database aging policies, data configuration, um, audit trail definitions. Uh, these are all things that are um, used for, throughout the application. Um, um, audit trail specifically will tracks everything that happens. Um, database aging policy will prune off data like alarms and log data, that kind of thing. And then um, there's some specific area for application settings. If you want to tune specific aspects of the product, there are some things you can set in this area. That's generally the main things people come to the, uh, the control panel for. So I'm going to go back to OMNM. And um, I wanted to uh, delve into the, uh, the general uh, landing page here. Um, as I mentioned, these are all portlets, portlet based. And this first one here that you're going to be most interested in is the getting started. And so this is what's going to walk you through your initial setup and get most of the things set up that you need to get, get, get you know, immediate use out of the product. First one here is Support Assist. It's going to allow you, when you go in here, I'll show you this one. We'll talk more at a high level about the other ones. But you're going to uh, basically read a EULA agreement and, and decide if you want to opt into this particular feature. And this feature basically turns on um, Support Assist on the devices so that they will send data, um, um, diagnostic data, up to Dell automatically. And so you can choose to turn that on or off in this screen here. And so sometimes they can be, be more proactive and tell you you're having a problem with one of your switches even before you know it. And so um, that data may be useful. Warranty reporting is another one where we can, uh, once you discover your devices, we will associate the service tag of all of your devices, switches, servers, whatever, um, and we'll go interrogate the Dell database and correlate that service tag and tell you that your, um, your warranty may be expiring or what warranties you have, and you'll be able to look that up and report on it. Uh, the next three is for mail, file server, and firmware. And so the mail server is mainly to allow you to email out items, for example, reports, um, that sort of thing. So this is just an SMTP configuration screen where you set up an outgoing server that these, this information can be sent through so that it will, it will hit the right email address. File servers are required for um, um, doing backup and restore and deploys because we write to a file server, we tell the device to go and get its its uh, configuration or its operating system off of a file server. So you need to have one set up. And so this is where you go into the edit screen here and set up uh, one or more file servers. Now this is Linux, you only have an external, but on a Windows box you would have an internal. We recommend you set up your own servers and uh, that support both FTP, NTFTP, and SCP so that you can support all the protocols on your devices. Um, there's firmware images that allow you, we allow you to basically import new images. We seed 
um, some images off the off the uh, right off of the product, but you can import new ones in here simply by giving it a name, a description, a version, um, whatever it is, for whatever um, for whatever device you're you're bringing in, and just select whatever device it it is associated with, and then we would go to the image file and simply import that either from a disk or you can import it from a URL if you have access to one uh, through a URL. Select the file and import it, and it will basically be in the system um, under your operating system and images. Um, you'll see uh, that in another screen where you can um, basically right-click a device and deploy that image. So that just makes those available. Um, the next one here is we would set up um, discovery, and the first part of that is authentication. We're going to have you set up your authentication profiles. Here's where you're going to set up, uh, if you're doing standard switches, it's generally an SNMP con um, configuration credential and a, um, a command line. So um, if it's doing V2, you would set your community strings and then your SSH or um, uh, Telnet command credentials that allows access to that box. And so once you have those set up, we, the discovery part here would, would, uh, would, uh, would prompt you to set up a discovery profile. This will be covered in another video. Um, but just get set up a discovery profile um, that will go out and use those credentials to discover your devices. Uh, the next part of this is Traffic Flow Analyzer. If you're going to use Traffic Flow, this is this will prompt you to basically register your devices and then um, uh, so that you can basically start getting flows from those devices. Now, typically those devices are configured in advance and, they're, and you have to tell them to send data to OMNM as a target uh, uh, traffic flow receiver. And so then what you would do is come in here and register your device so that it tells OMNM it's okay to accept this data. And then we would show that in our traffic flow portlets, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, but um, um, one key thing that we can help you out with here is that if you do know of a box that you want to start sending data, maybe you haven't configured, you can also configure it from here. And so this, this whole tutorial describes what's needed here. Generally, you need to basically go to the top level device and right click it and you can go to traffic flow. And if it's supported here, you'll see a prompt here. You'll see this one doesn't have it. Um, it's not set up. If we go to one here, if I can find one, you'll have, a, you'll have an option here to, um, to set the global level uh, for the device. Let's see if I have an appropriate example here. Yeah, here we go. So on this device, I can actually say create configuration. That will actually push configuration to the box at a global level to set up TFA and have it point to this, uh, this server so we can start receiving the data. You can also remove or show the configuration if you want. But the second part of this is all for all TFA, not only do you need to manage it or configure it at the top level, is to configure it at the port level or interface level. So you would go over and select the appropriate port or interface that you want that data to come from or be configured with, and then we would uh, basically right-click that. And if it's supported at also, you would see also the option to create configuration. So you would, you know, apply the create configuration, and then you would come over here, and right after you've done the, high, the top level, the port level, then you come over here and you say traffic flow register. And then the device will start sending data, and then we will start accepting it, and you would start seeing data in your traffic flow portlets. And here's just a snippet of what that might look like. Uh, moving on here, performance monitors are another important area. We have these default uh, screens that pop up, and they automatically populate with data based on the monitors you have configured. In order to see data on this default page for CPU and top interface and ping response and all of these shown here, uh, if you want to see this data um, in terms of the general performance of your network, you need to, you need to enable specific uh, uh, monitors. So this next screen talks about those monitors and what you need to do. So you'll see here, this, um, this talks about the default interface monitor, the CPU, and the memory monitor and the temperature monitor. And so you would simply come over to those monitors, as mentioned here, and you would right click and um, basically if it was if it was in if it was disabled it would say enable here these are already enabled but you can enable this one enable this one for ICMP this is your key metric I'm sorry your uh, ping monitor uh, your interface monitor should be turned on the key metrics are for uh, memory temperature and, and uh, um, those, those types of KPIs and so basically again just right click and enable it um, if you're doing Windows servers, you may want to in, um, turn on the WMI monitor. You can always come back to these later and turn them on if you need to, so don't feel like you have to do it here. Um, in order to do that, you would go over to, to settings and go to monitor management. 
And here's where you have all the monitors, not just those few that we recommend. And so here you would find the monitor you want and you would enable or disable um, as needed. Other videos will cover in detail monitors and how to set those up and, and uh, exactly what those are. Okay, and the last thing here is we check for Perl. Uh, Perl is required for a lot of the actions. Actions are ways to push commands to a box. Um, and so some of our implementation does use Perl, and so we just check it. Uh, you just click uh, go and click at it and test it, and then uh, um, it will validate if Perl is there or not. If it's not, then you need to install that. Um, generally, it's there in most installations. And then the last thing is Open Manage Essentials. This is another integration with Dell where um, we will integrate with a, an existing OME server. And so OME is basically a tool that Dell provides that allows you to manage servers. And we can go and pull all that information from that server that's collecting all that information into OMNM. So you have a single pane of glass to, uh, to uh, view alerts and report on inventory and that sort of thing. And so um, for fairly straightforward, you simply give it an IP address of this OME server credentials and then uh, just say enable it down here and it will go collect that information. Okay, that's a high level view, basic navigation. Um, um, one thing I didn't cover that I would like to cover here is that most of these portlets all support this expanded version. You see what's called a summary version here. Uh, you can simply click the plus sign here. So the, well, the summary version has fewer columns and that sort of thing. And so what you want, you can do is click the expanded column to get a more um, detailed view of, uh, of that particular portlet. And there's sometimes a little bit more functionality in there. And so, um, other things we need to talk about in the GUI are the help icon is um, uh, very context sensitive help. It will bring up specific information about that resource and uh, hopefully help guide you on what you might need, something you might need to know about the portlet. You have the wrench icon, which allows you to configure things such as the default filter. By default, we show everything in, the, in one of these portlets. And so if you want to see a more refined filter, you simply click on pick one that's there um, that already exists, or you can create your own and, uh, and further refine what you want to see. And so you can flip back and forth. If you have a large inventory, you want to see specific things. Um, we'll talk about this context mode on another portlet, but what, you're all, what you can do is have uh, portlets listen to other portlets so that you can get context sensitive information. I'll jump to that in a second here. Before I do that, I'll talk about columns. Um, this allows you to customize these columns layouts. And so you can uh, um, add a variety of columns to whatever you want, think you want to see in your view. You can set the width on them. Um, you can even reorder by dragging and dropping. So just be aware that that's there. Um, and the one the last thing I wish I wanted to show you was um, this context sensitive type behavior. What you'll see on this page, um, I'm going to set my default filter to show Um, all devices, the default one there, fly. And then what you'll see, you'll see that these ports and interfaces are blank. And as soon as I select one here, um, what you'll see, oops, let me try that again. Select another one here. Okay, so what, what, you, what, you, what you would see here, if this is set up, it may not be set up, but you'll see that this portlet here can listen, and we're saying listen to managed equipment. And then managed equipment has a setting here that says broadcast. So what will happen is, is that um, as soon as you click a row, what you should get is an update here that will show just the ports or interfaces for that portlet. And this is, this is common throughout the application. Some portlets listen, can listen, some can, can broadcast, and so you can have that kind of customization if you want it. And so um, gives you, gives you for a little bit more uh, a little bit more useful context when you go um, um, to navigate these screens. Okay, that's all I have here for the initial uh, just kind of a GUI run through. I want to thank you for uh, watching. Uh, this is Billy Savito, and uh, we will see you on the next session.